Well, everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, March 31st, not May, March 31st, 2013. And this is a Zero News update from the lab on the uh, Zero Lens Dynamo project. I stand here before you today to eat a little bit of crow. I um, made some claims yesterday and got a little excited. Later found out that some of the tests that I was conducting, most specifically the short circuit test, is invalid simply because the DC resistance of a smaller by filler pancake coil as opposed to the wire length incorporated in this much larger half sphere coil uh, 0.4 ohms for the sphere 0.1 ohms for the pancake makes a huge difference in the amount of output power attempting to be drained from the rotating magnetic assembly when you place either of these two coils short-circuited in the presence of the moving magnetic fields. Um, I later wound a smaller half sphere to have a more uh, more consistent or a closer comparison in terms of DC resistance to the pancake coils. I wound those on a um, oh, what is this? It's a racquetball and I have a piece of big pen going through it. I, I uh, located the, the holes on both sides of it so that the, uh, the pen goes straight through. There's a slot in here. I cut the, cut the slot so that I can insert the wire and then wind the wire around the racket ball all the way down to the straight pin that's driven through the side and glue it, hot glue it and super glue it into shape before lifting it off of the coil form. Subsequent testing I did um, was with the smaller half sphere coil, the Tesla bifiller pancake. I also tested some of my original bobbins from the Muller motor build that I, that I disassembled earlier and uh, the bifiller coil, Muller style. Did a whole battery of tests. Uh, when I factored in all of the variables, including the DC resistance of the coils, which I forgot to do, uh, I found that uh, they were uh, mathematically and statistically equivalent in terms of the amount of drag. One anomaly that I can report that I did that I found very interesting and I will even demonstrate that for you is I found that a moving magnetic field inside the half sphere coil produced little or no voltage output at the coil windings whatsoever. Very unusual finding I think. Uh, I would have to if I was to characterize what happened, I would have to call the inside of the sphere the quiet zone because it literally ignored any moving magnetic fields going past it. The only time I was able to induce a voltage in the coil winding was if I had a moving magnetic field on the back side of the half sphere coil. But inside, where I expected to see an enormous gain in the amount of induced voltage saw none whatsoever. Very, very peculiar. So, here's how I went about doing the tests and uh, here's why the previous video is null and void. I'm going to leave that previous video up simply to highlight the fact that you shouldn't get too excited too quickly until you've made sure you've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. So here are my five coils under test. I have the original half sphere coil that I wound on my wife's Tiki candle burner. 
I have this very nicely wound smaller half sphere that I wound on this coil form that I made using a racket ball. as well as some of my original Mueller coils. This one is the bifiller because you can see the jumper winding that doubles back and this one is a single only has uh, the one winding on it. And I tried it with and without the ferrite cores. With the ferrite cores I got much more induced voltage and of course uh, likewise, much more induced drag when I short-circuited the coils. Um, one thing I can note is that I also did not get very much current out of these coils as opposed to any of these other designs, the, uh, the half sphere or the pancake. So these are definitely inferior to these, no question about that and uh, there will be no looking no looking back with regards to that but some of the tests that I ran so that you can see how I did that all right I ran tests with the smaller coil facing the magnet assembly I ran it with their or with the back to the magnet assembly I ran tests with the open face to the magnet assembly straight on. I couldn't really go inside with this because this uh, this half sphere is too small and uh, ran the complete set of, set of tests with the, the bifiller pancake comparing it to this and to this. Interestingly enough both of these two coils produced very similar output voltages. However, uh, this one produced a little bit more drag because I, as I later found out, less wire, less DC resistance, uh, and uh, more output power or more input power causing the lens effect or the drag on the moving magnetic field. But the, the one part that I did find extremely interesting that really surprised me was I had I had this coil all the way over the top like this with the magnets spinning inside which is roughly equivalent to taking I would say a, a spherical neodymium magnet and putting it on a uh, on a shaft and spinning it inside uh, I don't think that will induce a voltage, but I'm actually going to try that anyway, just to make sure. But uh, from what I have seen based on, on this design and, and having the magnets spinning inside, I could not get this any closer. I had the, the top edge practically rubbing against the bottom where, where the center of the coil is. I don't know how well you can see that. So you can get an idea of just how deep I was able to get this thing inside the coil. And um, really, <laughs> very surprising results. I had literally almost null. It, it was almost a null effect. I, I have to call the inside of this coil the quiet zone. And for the record, here is the actual test with the large half sphere coil. This is with the back side facing the rotating magnetic drum at 7000 RPM. I get a maximum of about 6 volts peak to peak. This is uh, 1 volt per division. And now I'm going to take the drum, or the uh, 
the coil. And I'll flip it the other way. And place it over the spinning drum. And you can see this is with the this is with the back side of the of the coil facing the magnets. I get a little bit of induced voltage, not a whole lot. That's only about two volts peak to peak. And here's what happens when I take and plunge it deep into the into the center of the sphere. Those spikes that you see are just being induced by the uh, the driver circuit on the other side. I am way inside here. And I'm getting just a smidgen of voltage. But hardly what you might expect with neodymium magnets this strong deep inside. This half sphere coil. Very, very unusual. really unusual. So that's it. The half sphere Wardenclyffe coil. Will it save the whales or feed the hungry? Power your house? Don't think so. Um, at least not in its present configuration. Believe it or not, I still have a number of tests that I want to run on these coils because there are some very peculiar characteristics like the zero voltage induction with a moving magnet inside inside the uh, inside the half sphere really peculiar so I, I think that warrants a little bit further investigation but in terms of uh, the results that I posted in the previous video you can pretty much ignore those so lesson learned Crow has been eaten, I take it well done, and uh, with a little salt and fresh ground pepper. That's all for now, Zero Fossil Fuel from the lab. Everyone take care, and as always, peace.